Uh, welcome back to the lecture 13 again. So this is the third part where we are going to talk about Newton Euler method. Last two uh, parts where we have seen general, uh, you can say robot dynamics and then we have seen two formulation methods. In that one method we deliberated in the part two. Now we are actually like trying to deliberate the part three with the Newton Euler method. So as I already told the Newton Euler method is actually like something like force moment balance approach or force moment approach that's what people call. But this uh, Newton Euler method straight away I cannot apply to the you call uh, multi body system. So what I have to do I have to actually like do as an iterative method. So where the body to body information I will transfer and do it. So in the sense you, what you can see so the link would be having a mass. So the mass or the inertia would be on link not on the joint right so the link is the mass consisting body the joint is nothing but a virtual joint right so even sometimes we can consider that is also mass but it is actually like part of the link so in the sense what one can see so first you have to actually like do the velocity propagation and the acceleration propagation forward where we can start from the ground where the velocity and acceleration would be zero and we will actually like propagate based on the joints so now while we are going across what one can see so for example I am taking a, a nth link so what I can see there would be two joints and I can see that there is a center of gravity would be uh, you can say process and that particular point if it is actually like doing some action or you can say it is actually like having a motion there would be a resistance due to that motion this is the motion direction I call so then there is the inertia would, would be opposing that. So then in the sense the inertia force and the moment would be acting on the centroid of the link. So in the sense what we are going to do in the Newton Euler we would be doing first joint. So the joint velocity and acceleration propagation. So in the sense joint. So I call velocity and acceleration propagation. Okay. So the propagation is actually like what you call uh, it is actually like forward propagation. So then once each joint to joint you gone then the in between the link you call that the link forces and moments you would consider. So this is also on the go of forward propagation. Then what you can see the end effector is actually a free link because we are talking about serial chain and this point would be having a end effector force at the moment. So that would be known priorly. So then we can actually like come backward. So in the sense so we will apply the static relation what you have seen in the sense here we consider as a dynamic equilibrium and then we will come backward. So in the sense Newton Euler method although it is a simple but what we are going to use the Newton equation and as well as the Euler axiom we are going to use the Euler equation and the Newton equation we are going to use. So here AC is not straightforward AC. So this is actually like what you call centroidal uh, acceleration the centroidal acceleration linear acceleration that would be having several component there is a slip acceleration there would be a you call uh, Coriolis acceleration then there would be a centripetal or radial acceleration then there would be a tangential acceleration like that everything would be consist similarly you can see here so this is actually like going to give something like a gyroscopic effect and this is what you call the general uh, you call angular moment right so this is what the Newton and Euler equation we are trying to use. So now you in the sense I already told this is a recursive method or iterative method we will start i equal to 0 and go n then we will start from n you can say backward to you can say 1 or i equal to actually like n we start and we will come back to 0 or you can say 1 based on what we are seeing. So you want base forces you will come to 0 you want actually like only the first joint force and torque then you can stop up to 1 okay so this is the way we are actually like starting that's what i am saying so we will actually say outward iteration or forward propagation where to compute the joint velocity and acceleration that is what we are trying to do where you start from 0 to n you go for example rotary joint what would be the case so we will say the uh, velocity in the sense differential kinematics we have done this we will take and similar way you can actually like extend for the acceleration what you can see alpha i plus 1 to i plus 1 that would be r i plus 1 to i that would be alpha i to i then what you will have so you will have a cross thing what cross thing that would be having you can say additional cross to cross and then you will have the second thing which is actually like a 0 0 theta double dot of i plus 1. So that is what we are actually like doing it what in the sense you have a gyroscopic moment where the previous joint angular velocity and the current joint angular velocity can be having a couple. So that can be accommodated here. So in the sense you can see that that can be taken care further. So in the sense this is what we have done 
and this is the way we can actually like propagate for the angular velocity to the angular acceleration now we will actually like get the uh, linear acceleration because linear velocity is not really required because alpha and omega is sufficient for finding the linear acceleration so in the sense linear acceleration also like a previous linear acceleration and then you can see tangential acceleration then the radial acceleration if 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 this is actually like you can see a prismatic joint there would be a coriolis and as well as slip will come right now we are talking about that so now you can see if it is a rotary joint these are the three equations we are going to use for the forward propagation for finding joint velocity and acceleration whereas a prismatic joint what would be the case so the same thing you can see the prismatic joint that the theta one dot would not be coming or you can say theta one so theta dot i plus one would not be coming and similarly you can see that there would be a velocity propagation is required because there would be a coriolis component so we are actually like taking the velocity uh, you can say propagation so there you would be seeing that there is a slip velocity is coming in this so then further you are taking the alpha i plus one with respect to i plus one there would be no you call theta you can say 0 0 theta double dot i plus 1 because that is going to be 0 in the prismatic joint whereas you would have d double dot i plus 1 be there so then what we are seeing so you can see that this is the previous uh, you can say joint aspect but this is the current and the current angular velocity and current linear acceleration would be having a you can say coriolis component you can see that that is a two times and this is actually slip acceleration this is a coriolis acceleration this is a radial acceleration this is a tangential and this is the previous joint acceleration right so these all actually like accommodate now what we have done we have done the outward iteration which is forward propagation you call either it's a rotary or prismatic joint we can definitely get the joint velocity and acceleration now we will move forward so what we can do we know now joint velocity and acceleration what we can do we can actually like find the link force and link moment okay so in the sense link inertial force and link moment we are trying to find so in the sense i am writing that is actually like f which is nothing but what we are trying to do the link mass we are considering and the center of you can say uh, centroidal acceleration we are trying to calculate and what you know the inertial force would be opposite to that so in the sense f equal to m a c so that's what we are trying to substitute and we are trying to get the you can say link force similarly the link moment also we can calculate and we can actually like get that is what you call uh, forward propagation of the link forces and link moment so now what you can do the next case you know the nth joint you can say end of factor forces and moment and you are coming backward so in the sense these are the link so what you are doing the forward propagation you are calculating theta theta dot in the sense i will call so you can see that what we are trying to do so we are trying to find out the q dot and q double dot aspect and while we are actually like coming return so we are actually like seeing that the end effect are forced to individual force and moment that is what we are trying to do so in the sense what we are trying to do so we are trying to do this you can say so while we are actually like seeing this is the link okay so this link is having actually like two joints so where f i plus one to i plus 1 there is a individual force okay and as well as what happened this is having a link force which is due to inertia so now what i wanted i wanted this f i to i so what i can do this is actually like in i plus 1 that i can actually like backward to this then i multiply r i to i plus 1 so that is what i can see this is going to come with respect to the i plus 1 effect on i that i can do and then what i can see i have one link which is having the link force also there so now this need not to be even link force for example i have a cable so i have a cable which is actually like attached the tension also i can write so now this is a tension force okay so like that i can add then i can write that tension force of i right like that i can keep adding this is the advantage of having you call so called newton euler method similarly you can actually like extend the moment so in the sense you can see the previous moment and the current uh, inertial moment will come apart from that your inertial force also like trying to give what so called uh, you can say the moment and as well as your force for that uh, what i am trying to do i am just trying to do so something like this okay so now this is the centroidal you can say force and this is the centroidal moment okay and here i am getting n i plus 1 okay at i plus 1 frame i am actually like interested to find this so what else would be there 
so there would be actually like force also would be acting so that is f i plus 1 to i plus 1 so this distance i call p i to i plus 1 and this distance i call p uh, c i to i okay so now this actually like going to give a couple uh, f i into this so in the sense r cross f so here r is actually like p i to c and this is actually like r cross f this is actually like p i to i plus 1 into f i plus 1 so these are the couple due to the force and this is the initial moment and this is the moment at the point or the joint n plus 1 that is you are transferring here so now these two equations you know and you can actually like start from the you can say final joint where the free joint and then you can come backward so just to give that uh, finally what you will get so you know like every joint axis associated with that axis if it's a rotary joint that is associated with the torque and if it is actually like a translation joint that is associated with the f so that f would be the you can say uh, the final whatever the joint the third component in the sense this third component is in the fx fy fz the fz would be corresponding to that particular joint force right so similarly the joint torque you can see that is n i plus or i so that would be having n x n y and n z so the last joint or you can say last component is related to the joint force that is what we are trying to write here you can see that i am actually like multiplying this you call uh, row vector with respect to this column vector you can see that the final component will come so that is what you call torque vector and this is what sorry torque joint torque and this is the joint force so we are trying to maintain single uh, you can say variable for everything so tau i is actually like either joint force or joint torque so based on what joint we have it's a rotary joint it's a joint torque if it is a prismatic joint it is a joint force now we'll take a simple example so the same example we can take and we will actually like do the forward propagation for angular velocity and you can say linear velocity then angular acceleration and linear acceleration then we will come back with the fee, you can say backward uh, while going itself we will find the inertial force and moment so here actually like you can see the centroid also like concentrated here just to simplicity in the sense what you can see you can do the dh parameter and you can find the individual you call the uh, transformation matrix and then you can find the rotational uh, matrix or rotation matrix and then you can find the position vector and now when we are actually like doing the second thing what you have so p i to c i so for example i am actually like trying to see here so what would be the x i direction so this is what so i am just showing that so this is x1 and this is what you are first mass m c1 or m1 concentrated in the sense what would be the c i c i would be located here so what would be the position of c i with respect to i that is on the x direction that is actually like the distance is l so in the sense l1 0 0 right so now the second link you can see this is what x2 direction and this is what c2 so what would be the x2 or you can say p c2 with respect to c2 that is l2 0 0 right so in the sense you can see that the position of uh, centroid also like we calculated so that is what we are actually like doing it okay so this is the position vector come from the dynamic atom bark but this is you have to physically calculate in the sense you have to see and calculate so once that is obtained then you can go with the you can say base frame i assume that the base frame is fixed in the sense what happened omega 0 to 0 is nothing but 0 0 0 and uh, acceleration also like zeros in this case it is actually like 0 uh, and y axis there is a gravity and 0 y because we assume that this is x and this is y and this is z axis and your gravity vector is actually like in this case so this is the gravity vector so which is actually like i am writing as you can see uh, g is actually like not this minus g okay so in the sense what i can try to see the g is i will substitute minus 9.81 okay so that is what in the sense what would be the acceleration vector linear acceleration vector at zero point so the acceleration would be here so in the sense you can see the zero g and zero that is what we can so similarly alpha zero zero would be again zero 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 okay so this is what we are actually like taking as a base frame velocity and acceleration we can go forward so what that means so you are actually like seeing the end effector force so i am actually taking here you can see so i have taken this point is free so in the sense end effector forces where you call f33 would be zero and uh, n33 also like zero just for simplicity okay 
so then what you can see you know already the angular velocity propagation you know already omega 0 0 and you know r 1 2 0 and you know theta 1 dot also there so then what you can see you can actually like propagate this so then omega 1 1 known then omega 2 with respect to 2 also you can calculate the same way and you got it similarly you go 3 3 okay so then what you can do you can actually like go acceleration so angular acceleration you can start with the same way and you can actually like see that these are actually like uptime right so now what you can do now you can go with the linear acceleration the linear acceleration previous and the you can say that you can say tangential and the radial component you know because here everything is roti so you can actually like find it so a1 with respect to 1 we calculate and a2 with respect to 2 also calculate a with respect to 3 we can calculate so now what you can need to calculate you need to calculate the centroid so here this vector is known and uh, what you know these are individual joint velocities and joint acceleration is known so you can go further so you can calculate acceleration at point uh, you can say the centroidal one you can calculate so now you can see that these two calculated then what you can calculate you can calculate the inertial force and inertial moment in this case inertial moment would be zero because we assume that mass is concentrated at one point so then you can see that i would be zero then you can see n1 and n2 is zero so in the sense f1 and f2 only there so you can substitute that in the backward propagation where we start with the f3 3 is known and f2 2 is actually like your link inertial forces that is known then you can come backward so what you can see that f2 2 is obtained and based on the n equation you can actually like find the moment so now the f1 one also i calculated then i come back with n where the moment the moment you can see that this is there so in the initial joint this is going to be zero but you can see this is there and this is are existing right so and this is obviously zero and there is no moment also in this case so then what you can see you can actually like get these all and you can actually like still go forward sorry backward and then you can find n1 so if you want to know what would be your you can say base forces and base moment then you can come backward till this but right now we are interested in to find only the motion dynamics in the sense the equation of motion i can stop up to the active joint which is one right so that's why i stopped here if you want to know the base forces and moments in the sense what we call shaking forces and moments you want so then you can go then you can see what would be the support reaction and moment and then you can choose your what called fixes right now we are not doing that so then you can see that the same way we can calculate tau 1 and tau 2 and if i substitute that into the equation you derive manually and in our tutorial session we can do so then the tau 1 comes as similar to what you have obtained in the uh, lagrangian euler method this is the tau 2 so this is the way we can actually like use the newton euler method and as well as earlier we have seen Lagr lagrangian euler method and uh, this is what you call so called uh, robot dynamics in our case which is nothing but motion dynamics so with that i'm actually like closing this particular short session and we will do this more with uh, you can say tutorial that too we will use with uh, some kind of computational method where the symbolic math toolbox we will use and then we can see how we can actually like obtain this in ease of way if you are actually like familiar with mathematica that also we can see but since i i cannot actually like insist several software i will be restricting with one of the you can say popular uh, software which is matlab i will be using and with that i am actually like closing this particular session okay so with that i am actually like closing this particular short session so i'll be posting these three you can say parts and uh, next session would be the equation of motion in general and then how we can actually like segregate with that i'm actually like closing this dynamic session and see you in next class with the live session and we will see more you can say discussion there with that saying saying thank you and bye bye take care